Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. How you doing? Hi, everybody. I'm here. I'm queer. Wow. Let's get into it. You don't think we know you're queer already? Well, I got to say it You've for all the new people. shouting about it for two years. We've been, do- <laughs> we've been doing this podcast for almost two years. I know. When did we start the pod? I think it was like September a couple years ago. We, and we started in your living room. Oh, my God. We were drunk. Super booty. <laughs> uh, it was great, though. I know. That's like, how we found a lot of people. Yeah. Doing primarily sister wives yeah. stuff and just screaming into the void about Cody Brown. Oh, yeah. Oh Speaking gosh. of which, we yeah. will get back to that. I know yeah. some people have commented and asked on Instagram and stuff, when are you bringing sister wives back? We'll bring it back. But we have Vanderpump Rules. We got Valley. We got... Seeking Sister Wife got a lot on our plate. Well, right but now. I'm missing it a little bit too. Me too. And yeah. we talked about it and we had said maybe May. Are yeah. you still down for May? Well, after VPR is done. VPR is not going to be done, girl, until like after like June. I think we've got 20 episodes of Vanderpump Rules. What are we on? Why? Episode 12. Yeah, I think we have Why? a lot more coming. I think we had two more months of VPR. That's are literally you telling insane. me we don't get to do anything with the Brown family? We got so much on our got so many uh, things to go. It's a little time. Anyway, we are intending to bring it back. Yeah. But like she works full time. Yeah. I'm a lady of leisure. Yeah. <laughs> but she works full time. So I do. We have to work around your janky ass I'm booty sorry. ass. Oh ass fuck ass <laughs> oops schedule i said i was gonna stop swearing she told so me much. before that she's like you swear too fucking much you, you swear a shut lot up. and then here you are swearing up like a sailor well i'm gonna try to swear less because we're on youtube and they're going okay. to demonetize us okay <laughs> you said all that in whatever the first five minutes. <laughs> welcome to the show everybody um before we get into vanderpump rules which we are here to talk about yeah. we want to remind you to pull Please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast, which means we say bad words. Obviously. We're going to try and say less, <laughs> but we say bad words. We have dumb opinions mm-hmm. that you might not agree with, but if that's okay with you and you're not sensitive, then welcome to the dumpster baby. And be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. We got so much bonus shit up on there. It's insane. And it is the best way to support us if you like the work that we're doing. And it is hard work. Yeah. And it's real work. Real Thank work. Thank you. Also, if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe. Every little thing you do really does help us in the algorithm and it helps us to grow. And that's what we want more than anything. Yeah, thank you. So thank you in advance. We appreciate it. Now, before we get into VPR, Mm -hmm. did you happen to see on your Instagram timeline, honey, a new commercial from Chili's restaurant? So apparently, Sheena Shea and Katie Maloney what? together were in a Chili's commercial selling chilies or margaritas or something like that. Give like Chili's one the margarita. restaurant? Yeah. <laughs> the restaurant. What? So, which is interesting because, of course, they've never really gotten along uh-uh. necessarily. Yeah. I think they also cut like separate little promos for Chili's. And I think Sheena's separate promo on IG got like 5,000 likes and Katie's got 45,000 <laughs> likes. Uh, Amazing. And then Brock made an Instagram story no. in which he told everybody, can you please go to Sheena's little promo and like it because she's feeling a little bad about it. That's cringe AF. I know. It's freaking chilies. But yeah, but do you see how sensitive Sheena is and I also Drama. think she's very concerned about brand deals and wanting brands to know that she's just as liked as Katie Maloney and so no, she's, she's having not. her husband who I don't think does anything unless she tells him to honey. uh-huh yeah she's having Brock make IG stories so that people can go and like her promo which just <laughs> caused people to go to Katie's promo even more <gasps> and like it so oh. I just feel like that's so delicious. I don't know. I just think that like, <laughs> we're eating in the dumpster, wow. baby. She is so desperate. Cringe. That is really cringy. Mm-hmm. 40 years old and you're fighting over Chili's promo. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like effortless for Katie. And Katie's just like, what? I'm here. They love me. But yes. she is trying so hard. Pick wow. me, pick me. Cringe. Yeah. That's amazing. Now I'm going to have to look on yeah. the algorithm later tonight. Go look tonight. at it. Oh Go find God. it, honey. Wow. 
throw Sheena a like. No. <laughs> from Reality TV Cringe. Why Maybe, don't yeah. you? Yeah, give, give her a from like. From Reality TV Cringe. Girl. Not my personal account, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into this episode. All right. Well, we start this episode entitled, How Do You Like Them Apples? Ooh. Ooh. Um, with Rachel, Raquel, dropping a podcast episode. So this is like the theme of the whole episode. Yeah. Is everybody at various locations talking mad crap about Rachel Raquel's podcast episode. And I think, I guess it wasn't like her personal podcast. No. It was, she was on Bet Henny's podcast from a... Did you say Bet Henny? Yeah. <laughs> I know it's not that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I call her Bet Henny because it's the spelling. Okay. Bethany Frankel. Oh my God. All right. I was yeah. like, I never know with you. No. So I have to stop and just make sure that you don't go out into polite company and say stupid words no, like that. No, it's Bet Henny. It's <laughs> Bet Henny Frankel's yes. podcast. Yes. From Real Housewives of Jersey? New York, honey. Okay, whatever. Same diff. I don't care. But she was on her podcast, I guess, and she was talking mad crap. So we start with the girls, Sheena, uh, Lala, I think Ariana's there, except Katie, at the studio recording her new song. Or not recording her. It was good as gold. Music video for good as gold. How many times (laughs) do we have to be subjected to that goddamn song? Good as gold. It's been years. It's a bad song, objectively. Good as are you gonna ask God? God I talk can't. about writing something and the whole like setup all of the gold bars everywhere her gold outfit i'm like stop like please stop. for me and my mental health please stop yeah i'm sick of your good as gold <laughs> I, I truly am I know. and then we get another song from her later in the episode apples <laughs> which we'll get into yeah we will but this is where everybody starts kind of discussing the podcast like sheena tells the girls like oh my god have you heard of her podcast like what she's been saying and then we flash to james and Allie at their house Allie's telling james about the podcast and she's like yeah raquel said that she's not over you and that she was never in love with tom sandoval yeah and also she called james a bad dog daddy Uh uh-huh and made some accusations and she has since come out with some even stronger accusations against james kennedy and just sidebar if we can sidebar for a second because when i tell you how hard i am holding on to my dislike of james kennedy based on um this information or these allegations that he hit Kristen and he potentially Kristen. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was uh, he hit Raquel, too. Yeah, her, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, Kristen first. I mean, according to Kristen, and also then Raquel, like, with her nose after mm-hmm. her nose job. Like, I'm holding a grudge, but, like, I come from a background where there was a lot of domestic violence. So, like, that's just such a in-stone deal breaker for me. Yeah. But I have to say, none of those allegations have been proven. Mm-hmm. People are innocent until proven guilty Mm -hmm. and the more i see james this season like if i didn't know that for example like the more i would really like him i'm loving him when he was when he was with tom sandoval and the fucking most extras honey i know i'm skipping ahead but like that was chef's kiss amazing just dragging him. Yeah, but you're a liar, Tom. And everybody knows it. I mean, I'm just like, oh, God, damn. I love it. Yeah, you came to fight. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I just thought that, I don't know, James is kind of appealing to me. Oh, yeah. And yeah. a lot of people on the IG and everything are talking about how they love James this season and think he's hilarious. And he kind of is like the comedic relief to this yes. <laughs> weird season. And a voice of reason. Totally, which yeah. is very interesting. And somebody who's willing to call shit out. Like mm-hmm. Lala also has some of those aspects, but she just doesn't do it in the same kind of way. Mm-hmm. So she's not nearly as likable. Let me ask you a question, a hypothetical. Okay. So if it came out that James Kennedy had actually put his hands on one or both of those girls or other women and hurt them, mm-hmm. is that something that he can like come back from is that something where he could redeem himself over time because if you recall brock Mm -hmm. sheena's dumbass husband loser yeah um admitted to hitting his ex-wife i think in australia oh he did he did dang he was like 19 or 20 he was quite young and he's like yes i did that Mm -hmm. and, and i should not have done that and i would never do that again and we've all kind of seemingly moved on from that mm-hmm but I mean, for you, for example, I know I'm crazy about it. Mm-hmm. But like for you, are you able to, th- do you think people, once they do something like that, that they can just get over it or they'll, they'll, they can get better or they'll never do it again? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it is possible. I don't I don't think it's like the general trend of it, you know? Like I think most people when they start hitting their significant others and stuff, like it's kind of a habit and it doesn't stop. But I mean, there have been famous examples of this, like Chris Brown with Rihanna, mm-hmm. right? Like I mean, she forgave him after right. all of that, after him brutally assaulting her. Right, but I mean, do you think he's been redeemed? I mean, I, I mean, think he's really. still an asshole. And I yeah. think he's actually gone on allegedly to put his hands on other people. I don't know. He says he's redeemed. Yeah. He I says just, he's I mean, better. I, I will never be able to get over that with him either. I yeah. don't know. I just am wondering if it's me because I'm up on Reddit, I'm online, and everybody seems to love yeah. James Kennedy. So maybe people are just like, you know what? Maybe he was young. Maybe he was passionate. Maybe, Maybe he, he was, was drunk. drunk. Yeah. Now he's sober. Now he's in his 30s. Mm-hmm. Now he's trying to do something different. Like, I still very much struggle with it, but... Well, it's never acceptable. Like, it's never an acceptable thing to do to somebody else by being a domestic abuser, obviously. But it's like, I don't know. I mean... Maybe he was young. Maybe it didn't happen. Maybe right. it's just like, it's kind of hard to tell with these fake Bravo types. Like, it's like, is it a rumor or did he actually happen? And did it actually happen? And is everybody just tolerating it mm-hmm. from this piece of shit guy? Like, right. that's the thing where I, I like him this season, but that's always in the back of my mind. I always hear your voice in the back of my head, mm-hmm. mind, but like, well, he hit Kristen, he hit Raquel. And I'm like, ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But he's funny, though. I, it's like but hard. Don't we also think like if he really did that, then, for example, Tom Sandoval would be weaponizing that against him in these types of moments. Right. Or like other cast members might be using it against him. Right. So, yeah. It's just something to think about. Yeah. Something that I'm noticing in myself. Like, oh, I really want to like him. I know. Because he's having some really good moments this season, but I'm still a little hesitant. Even Brock. I didn't realize that he admitted to... Yeah. Hitting his ex-wife or whatever. Yes. That's, ugh, I hate him. Well, I never liked him in any way. I never liked him. Did you, sidebar again, <laughs> did you see him on the after show? I've been seeing him on the after but show. But did you see him on this most recent one in his outfit? He's been wearing the same thing the entire Listen, time. the heels. What's wrong with that? L- it's fine. But For I just, a lesbian, you seem very no, attached to like gender fine. normative. No, I'm not at all, but I think Brock looks stupid in it. That's all. Well, I mean, I think, I think there is bad. a trend currently for masculine men to wear more feminine clothing. And, sure. I, and, and I think that's totally fine. And I yes, love it. Yes, I agree. But with Brock, it feels desperate. <sighs> it doesn't seem organic or authentic. I'm like, why are you wearing four inch heels? And lace. And lace. Sleeves. And like, didn't he go out to dinner with the guys when they all wore their like best mm-hmm. suits and he wore like ruffles and stuff yeah i don't know the ruffles are fine i don't really care i don't i just feel like he's a tryhard yeah he is a tryhard he's trying to make a statement he is so desperate to be the number one guy on vpr and that's why it looks dumb not because it's like heels well or lace i thought the heels were ugly yeah (laughs) right like poor fashion choice yeah but i think he looks ridiculous especially like next to james who looks so good and is like sky blue blazer and his white pants he looks wonderful and then there's <laughs> fucking brock he just looks stupid i don't yeah. know don't come at me in the comments I'm, it's coming my at you. I'm coming at you it's my opinion <laughs> anyway. um and then the other thing that came out of this scene at the studio with the girls with this good as gold music video good as gold. i can't sheena also tells ariana that rachel said yeah, me and Ariana were not actually good friends. We were just acquaintances, which Ariana's like, that's bullshit. So what do you think about that? I think Ariana is absolutely right. She's like, she's either trying to convince herself that we weren't ever really close so that she doesn't feel so bad about what she did or else it was always just a lie. Yeah. And it never meant anything to her, but it definitely meant something to Ariana and Ariana actually considered her to be a very, very close friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, what's going on here? I feel like Rachel's digging herself a bigger and bigger hole. It's pretty bad. And then we have Tom Schwartz at his lonely apartment and Sandoval comes over to join him to talk about this podcast. And he cries. Again. To Schwartz. One glycerin (gasps) tear. How could she do this to me? (gasps) I really loved her. (laughs) Did you? I had all this hope and now it's gone. Like, hope for what? Well, for 
Rachel to come back and for Ariana to move out of the house (laughs) and for Rachel to assume her half of the mortgage Mm -hmm. to help him to be able to live the life that he has become accustomed to yeah and to bang her and then ultimately cheat on her yeah yeah that's why he's crying because all of his hopes and dreams are dashed (laughs) and we love it I do love to see it yeah and then we have um Lisa Vanderpump Schwartz and Sandoval all at Tom Tom because I guess they're going to do brunch or something. Yeah. They're setting up for brunch. And Sandoval again brings up the whole podcast. He's really butthurt by it. Yeah, but he arrives, I want to say, 45 minutes to an hour late to Lisa Vanderpump's restaurant, yeah. which she owns the majority share in. They only they only own 10% between the two of them. Amazing. Like you're keeping the primary shareholder waiting for an entire hour like how entitled and conceited and narcissistic do you have to be and then as soon as she's like starts to hit him up about it he's petulant Mm -hmm. he's like what do you want me to do (laughs) like are you a 41 year old man who has a legitimate business like who are you yeah it's crazy to me i know have some respect show up on time i know don't be a fucking toddler i hate him so much i know he's such a piece of shit i had hope for him at the beginning of the season you did i thought maybe he could pull it out like he could redeem himself a little bit you even did. though what he did was ter- terrible nope like was it worse than what Jax did to stassi i don't like these people have done these types of things but like he has crashed and burned he's a terrible person he's awful and then he's going on about this podcast and lisa vanderpump literally is like who cares (laughs) who cares what rachel raquel is saying it doesn't fucking matter she doesn't want you she doesn't want you at all i knew that i knew that four episodes ago. been knowing that (laughs) been knowing right i told you that Mm -hmm. and she's just like get over it dude and he's like i don't know i can't do Uh, i don't know and then they start making drinks and getting ready for brunch is he really this torn up about it or is he just doing this for the cameras so that people will start to feel sorry for him and make it easier for him to bounce back like i just can't believe he's really this morose and maudlin while also at the same time like dancing around on stage with his dumbass band right 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 i think it bothers him like in terms of his ego because how dare this girl that i cheated on with talk anything bad about me but i don't think he's like crying over it I mean, just get over it, dude. And then Lala shows up to Tom Tom just to ask Lisa Vanderpump, "Hey, can you host my sperm donor party like tomorrow?" Tomorrow, <laughs> I've got all the catering set up. I've got everything planned. I'm like, wait, you have all the catering set up, but you don't know where they're going to drive all that food and set it up at? Like, what? What? That doesn't make any sense. I guess this is Bravo Television. It's gotta it's be been pre-planned. Yeah, one hundred percent. So Lisa's like, okay, fine, but I don't want sperm everywhere. <laughs> well, she's a kind of a boomer about it. A like, little she bit. insists Lisa does on judging Lala and her choices and. As Lisa had told her previously, like, why don't you just find yourself a man and make yourself a baby? And I was like, because I do not want a man. I do not need a man. I want to have this baby of my own accord. Can you just support me? I'm an adult person. Yeah. And finally, Lisa's like, okay, you have my blessing. And Lala actually cries. Yeah. Lala's all over the place. I know. Sometimes I love her. Sometimes I just can't stand her. I know. It's kind of weird. But that's what makes me think. I'm like, are you pregnant now? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Because I'm like, you're emotions are like Ooh. no she's always been this way really yeah she's always been erratic and hot headed yes yeah. okay well that's weird <laughs> and then we have uh ariana at her and tom's house and brock and sheena come up to be such good friends and help her clean her mess of a house okay we got to talk about this yes let's talk about this because on the surface it seems like a nice thing to do for your friend like let me come over do you a solid Mm -hmm. you know buy the pizza we'll come we'll help you clean up straighten it up but it didn't even seem like ariana wanted them there and like they busted into the house and started being super critical about like why is there stuff on the dining room table how can you live this way i have ocd i could never live this way which is a passive aggressive way to judge Ariana Uh and make her look bad. Yeah. In the same breath, saying that you care about her mental health and you're worried that she's getting bad again because of the state of her house. Like, don't act like you care and you're doing such a kind thing for her when you're also putting her down for how messy her house is. Right. And even bringing up the fact that 
they tended to have messy homes mm-hmm. over the years. And then Bravo, of course, shows all of the montage of like their other homes and apartments where they were kind of slobbish. Yeah. And we've talked about that. But I just mm-hmm. didn't understand what their motivation was. I also didn't understand why the fuck Brock needed to be there. Because <laughs> he's Sheena's barnacle. God, he's such a clout goblin. Mm-hmm. He just wants to be on camera. But I just felt like that whole thing was trumped up so that they could make Ariana look bad. But why would Sheena want to do that? Why would know. Sheena want to do that? I don't know. It's really weird. And like, why would Ariana want Sheena there when they've kind of had this weird tension like all season because of Sheena's relationship with Sandoval? It was very bizarre. But the only thing that came out of this was they were talking about Tom's offer. Yeah. So Ariana knew. So I guess she made a counter offer. She finally responded. And then Tom, I think it was with Schwartz, maybe he was talking about it there, I forget, where he's like, well, now I'm considering not taking her offer. She wants to accept it, but now I've had some time to think about it. And so now I've got to think about another counter offer. Well, also my finances have changed mm-hmm. in the long ass time she took to respond to my offer. And obviously we see Ariana in the after show saying like, I was doing my due diligence, like, and I was also preparing my counter offers so that everything would be included. And furthermore, we're talking like three months after this all went down. Yeah. So your financial landscape changed so dramatically in three months that now all of a sudden you don't have the money to buy her out or you never had the money to buy her out. You didn't really know what you were asking for or you were hoping she was going to give a lot of this away to you oh yeah yeah 100 because she wanted to get out so much yes and she's telling sheena and brock this like she's like now tom wants to sell the house because he realizes that there's so much that would have to go into buying me out mm-hmm. we'd have to fucking refinance so we'd lose right. the interest rate right. the 2021 interest rate of two percent that's right and so then he'd be really screwed and on the hook for the whole ass mortgage yes. as opposed to just half of the mortgage like he wasn't factoring any of that in i i don't even think he realized oh shit i i gotta refinance this yeah like that's how dummy is and she even says to sheena and to brock like i knew this day one I knew what his money situation was. I knew he did not have the money to do it. Yeah. So I knew he was just fucking around and or fucking with me. Yeah. And so now it's a big surprise. Now you you don't know if you can do it. Well, I know you can't do it. We're going to have to sell this house. But the time to have sold the house was in March. Exactly. And now three, four months have passed. The market is cooling off. Interest rates are going up. And it's not the same deal, honey. Mm-mm. No, it's not. And I would have been pissed if I was Ariana. For, to hear him through the grapevine be like, yeah, I'm considering selling the house and just getting rid of it, whatever. And that's what she wanted to do from the get go. Mm-hmm. Like he's a piece of shit. I think he was doing it on purpose to like rile up Ariana or something, or maybe prove a point like, yeah, I've got all this money, but now you don't. Maybe he did have the money and then he spent it all. Maybe while she was getting all of these brand deals, he was losing brand deals and or mm-hmm. losing opportunities. And maybe people weren't showing up to his stupid ass band concerts. Yep. And maybe he was having trouble. And I, I know he was also kicked out of, Schwartz and Sandy's like physically kicked out like he can't come into the bar anymore although I think he still has his ownership portion and you know I would imagine he still makes money from it but like remember when Ariana was telling the girls at the astrology chart party that she only had two thousand dollars in her account at the time of Scandaval right so keeping in mind that's like three or four or five months before this scene that we're watching this week. So just four or five months ago, she only had $2,000 in her account. Like how much more would Tom Sandoval have had? Right. I understand they kept their finances separate. I mean, I imagine that they did. But like, I can't imagine he was so much more wealthy than she was. Right. Like that there was such a huge disparity between them. What I'm saying is, I just don't know that he ever had a ton of money. Mm. So I was hope. I think he was hoping... That he would be able to somehow swindle her out of what she was owed in the house. Ah, so that's why she was so mad about it. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. This is all speculation. But Uh, he sucks. He does That's not speculation. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. And then we also have Sheena saying, I made a song. And it's about Raquel and what happened with it because it affected me. And it affected everybody in the group, but especially me. And also there's a line in there about Sandoval. Right. And so we'll get into that. Apple song. Later. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next scene is Tom at his dress rehearsal for the Misfits. Honey. Singing in that falsetto. 
Wow. I can't. I sent you a video of it yesterday when right. I was watching it. And you were like, that's him singing? I'm like, yes, bitch. I, I, I <laughs> couldn't believe it. I mean, I've seen footage of him doing like songs, covering songs. And mm-hmm. he was like, okay. I mean, he's pitchy. He's not that great. But like what we saw in this episode is objectively bad. It's very Super bad. Super terrible. You see his like backup singer wincing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah super fucking pitchy it sounds terrible and he's oblivious Uh uh-huh like if i'm singing and by the way i have the voice of an angel she does if i'm singing and i'm pitchy i hear that duh but it's like he doesn't hear his own voice no how terrible it is i know wow i love that for him i know it's pretty great Mm -hmm. but then james shows up yeah and this is where it gets great yeah because they start talking about the podcast and i think it was sandoval that brought up yeah Rachel said that you were emotionally abusive to her and she's saying all these horrible shit. And James like, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't. He really doesn't give a shit. It's like, and did you hear that she said she never really loved you? Yeah. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom's like, she did love me. We were in love, bro. It was real. You don't know anything. <laughs> Which is really funny because then James starts going off and he's like, oh, police right (laughs) you guys were fucking in the bathroom downstairs while ariana's upstairs like you guys it was just a fuck fest between you two like there was nothing yeah and sandoval's still getting defensive he's like you don't know bro you don't know that i was really in love with her she was the only one i ever loved yeah and james is literally just laughing at him which is how you know he's so much better than sandoval (laughs) And he's so over Sandoval. Oh, yeah. Because he's not triggered. Mm -hmm. He's not getting mad. He's like literally just laughing at him like, you are pathetic, actually. You're actually pathetic. Hardcore pathetic. And then he's like, okay, whatever. But by the way, I'm not going to be able to open (laughs) for you because I'm on to bigger and better things. And so like, have fun. Got to go. He calls the band a joke. Yeah. He's like, this is a total joke. Yeah. I would never open for you ever again (laughs) because I'm better than you. So perfect. Peace out. He also tells him that what him and Ariana had was true love Mm -hmm. and that what him and Raquel had wasn't right which I was like dang just stab him and it hurts. Tom immediately starts to deny it but then James is like you told me over and over and over again that you loved that girl yeah. and then Tom says well I mean I did love her and in and amongst this is where James just says yeah but you you're a liar dude yeah like you lie all the fucking time so the implication being like I'm not listening to anything you're saying because you prevaricate constantly Good so word. when James is walking out doesn't he say well go and just push some buttons on your laptop then yeah yeah and James is like oh fuck you yeah. <laughs> he's like you're a piece of shit <laughs> I mean James played Coachella last yeah. weekend James has got some big Polly D Jersey Shore type gigs that yeah. he's doing, unlike fucking Tom Sandoval and the most tax <laughs> You know, his fucking cover band I know. when James is like an actual DJ getting gigs mm-hmm. and making money. Yeah. Sorry, Sandoval, that you suck. Mm-hmm. That was so glorious. Priceless. So amazing. And then we have Lala's sperm donor party at Lisa Vanderpump's house. And it's kind of sweet and wholesome. She's yeah. having all the girls there, basically. They're all going to help her choose between one of three sperm donors well the girls and the gays yes oh and, there was gays there well I thought it was just girls she referred well her brother was there oh but i mean i think there bad. were some gentlemen that were there but like can i ask you as a gay person yeah do you have any feeling about this propensity of like the real housewives to refer to their homosexual friends as their gays these I are mean, my gays and these are my friends no, I don't really, it I'm not like offended by it. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, I feel like it's, I mean, yeah, they're the gays. They're but the I mean, token they're people. Gays. I mean, aren't, yeah. aren't they people first? Why do we sure. have to call them the gays? Well, because they're the gays. I'm a gay. Okay. I, if, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's not care. something I would do. I just, these are my friends. Yeah. These are my friends, the people that I love the most. I'm yeah. not going to call out them as gays and or my gays. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think some but you people... don't care and I think that's fine. Yeah. I think some people might You're my get offended. Gay. Yeah, I am. I'm I am your token calling gay. you that too. At the safe way. You got two Where's gays. Where's my gay at? <laughs> you got two gays. I know. Where's my gays at? <laughs> you do say that sometimes. You guys call us. Yeah. You and your husband are like, where are the lesbots? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so same dip. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> but I would, would I do that on tele... I would. Yeah, you I would. I would call you the lesbots. <laughs> you would. Yeah. Of course you would. <laughs> um 
back to the sperm donor party. <laughs> sperm donor party. It's cute. It's whatever. It's wholesome. They play pin the sperm on the cervix. Right. Which is like fun. It's funny. It's a uterus. But yeah, I mean, whatever. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. Same dose. Same, same. Well, I mean, you're gay. You like that. Yeah. <laughs> Not when sperm's know. involved. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but it's pretty cute. And then Lala starts reading off the profiles of all the sperm donors, which I thought was kind of fun. Yeah. I think about like whenever we have kids. Yeah, me too. And I'm like, well, maybe we should do that. Maybe we should have a sperm donor party. Oh, it's just going to be me and my husband. Yeah. <laughs> and Ethel. <laughs> <laughs> Ethel. <laughs> just that's fine though yeah that would be It'd so be great. cute yeah. it would be very cute i can't wait i know and when i was like listening to all these sperm donor profiles and stuff i'm like dang six two mm-hmm. plays instruments master's degree in this or that i'm like dang yeah. okay yeah that'd be pretty cool so they pick um sperm donor number one mm-hmm. and she's gonna get the jizz inserted into her and then she wants a virgo baby did you hear that yeah which i do love do you yeah i'm a virgo rising i'm a virgo mercury i like virgos virgos are cool they're they're, but you know they can be i mean Mm. lala yeah (laughs) she's a virgo yeah exactly (laughs) and she wants to get inseminated november and or december so that she can have that virgo baby and i I think she got pregnant in december so yeah it's either going to be Virgo or Libra. Yeah. I love a Libra personally. I mean, Libras are cool. Yeah. Ethel's a Libra. Robin like Brown's a Libra. A Libra. Oh, yeah. God. The shadow side of That's everything, right. girl. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have, um, we're back at Oriana and Tom's house, but it's just the two Toms. So it's Sandoval and Schwartz. Mm-hmm. And this is where they're talking about. And Craig. Don't forget Craig. Respond. Yeah, Craig, which I think is Sandoval's gay lover. Do okay. <laughs> is this your updated two gay point oh conspiracy. gay conspiracy? I mean, I mean he he's kind of he's kind of fine. I he was I very was like, Hi, I was like, dang, very handsome. I know he's walking around all barefoot the next to shorts Sandoval. and stuff with like mm-hmm. them tattoos and everything. I was, I was like, like he's a little sexy. I uh, know, like, like, sexy little number. Maybe Sandoval's got a crush on him. Maybe you know? maybe they get drunk or whatever. It's like a broke back bound type thing upstairs. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. But they're talking about why the... it's always got to be that though. Because <laughs> I always have to bring a gay conspiracy. <laughs> okay because most of the time i'm right i'm just saying okay i'm right but anyway they're talking about ariana's counter offer sandoval's like yeah i'm reconsidering it i don't know if i'm gonna accept it and then he asks schwartz hey i do need a roommate and schwartz is like really i don't know if i want to live with you and sandoval's like yeah well no it'd be cool you could pay six thousand dollars a month in rent and schwartz is like excuse toward my mortgage (laughs) excuse me $6,000 $6,000 for nothing? No equity, nothing? Yeah. And Sandoval seems like he's like seriously trying to course yeah, into it. Yeah, I think he's trying to, in a creative way, find a way to keep this house. Mm-hmm. And what better way for him to do that than rope Tom Schwartz into his shenanigans? Oh, but my God. Before he even asks Schwartz, Schwartz knows what's coming. He's like, uh-huh. don't even ask me. <sighs> Absolutely not. We would look like a couple of fucking nip- income poops. No way. Yeah. So he knows the optics of it. Yes. And he also knows that he doesn't want to throw good money after bad no which is just like giving tom sandoval a boon of six thousand dollars a month that's insane yeah that's literally insane and then i think at some point sandoval's like well then what what if we like bought a place together and we got a loan together and schwartz is like no right just what i want to do is hitch my wagon and my finances to yours in a bar uh-huh. in two bars actually and a home absolutely not no. absolutely not can you imagine these 40 oh year old losers <laughs> bringing home chicks at night they wouldn't be bringing home chicks they'd be fucking each other oh, oh god <laughs> <laughs> my god well maybe and then joe will come over <laughs> start spazzing out <laughs> bro <laughs> hey joseph god cringe and then we have james and Allie at their house this is where they're talking about their future and kids and stuff nobody cares james is all sad because he wants to be a dad Allie's like i'm 24 i don't know if i want to do that she's 28 what i didn't know that i thought she was 24 i thought she was so much younger than what's only four years (laughs) but she's she's your age she's 28 28 years old yeah 28 yet well, you're almost 28. You're virtually 30, honey. Shut up. Yeah, you're virtually 30. <laughs> so that's usually the time like a young woman will start thinking about yeah. whether they want to have a child. And so to hear that she's not there yet, not at all, I'm like, oh, I like that. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Don't like spit out a baby and get married and hook yourself to James in this weird house in the flight. 
pass. Like, you don't need to do that. Like, you could continue to do your astrological readings. You yeah. get really famous on Vanderpump Rules. You yeah. have your choice of any man that you want. You don't need this James Kennedy abusive guy, <laughs> allegedly. I feel like she loves him. She's in this house with him. But I don't know. I, I feel like the only reason he's sober is because if he's not sober, she's going to leave his ass. For sure. Yeah, because he's a drunk so asshole So is he otherwise. really sober? And if he's not sober, is he going to hit her? Like, I don't know. We don't have to talk about it anymore. Oh, I don't know, man. I hope he doesn't But he do did cry. And he does want a family. Yeah. And we saw him on the after show say, like, once I have a child, I am not going to tour anymore. I cannot do that. Yeah. I want to be home with my child. So everything sweet. is going to change. So I've got time. Yeah. That was sweet. Isn't he, like, 40 also? No, I told you. What? I forget. Yeah, no, he's 31 or something like that. He's on oh, the low yeah, so he's end got, of the 30s. Yeah. He's got so much time. Yeah. He could be like Gordon Ramsay, be like 50 something and have a new baby. Yeah. But what about you? <laughs> <laughs> what about you and your clock? It ticking? Girl, if I had sperm already, yeah. if I had a dick and balls, we would have been pregnant. We would have had well, four kids We could kids go to the California now. cryo clinic. That's we true. We could do the very same thing. Although it's expensive at that cryo clinic. Is it? Yeah. How do you know? She said it was super expensive. Lala oh. said it's the most expensive on the after show, I think. She was like, it's the oh. most expensive, most pleasurable thing I've ever done to have a baby. Well, I mean, I think she was just comparing that to cheap ass, dirty ass ho sex. <laughs> I know. That doesn't mean it's yeah. necessarily expensive. Like I have a friend who lives in California. She's a lesbot mm -hmm. like you and she's married. And she got inseminated. I think the whole thing was covered under like Kaiser Permanente oh. or health insurance. I don't know if we got that shit in Texas. No. Probably not. Um, and I think the jizz itself was like four G's, but I think she got three vials of it. Dang. So if it doesn't take the first time, you can go back and try again a few times for $4,000. I feel like we could crowdfund yeah. your insemination. We should make a GoFundMe within the next year. <laughs> We got to have plans. We got to think. A think raccoon, like raccoons. Me. <laughs> yes. Give me a gram, baby. <laughs> that would be pretty cute. Mm -hmm. um, and then last but not least, we have everybody showing up at TomTom Tom for brunch. Nobody really cares. James apologizes to Sandoval, kind of. He's like, sorry, bro, about the other day by calling you a liar, mm -hmm. which you are. But it's <laughs> right. all good. But how mature of James? I know. Just like, you know, I want to get along and I'm not going to continue to antagonize you. And like, let's just <laughs> squash it's so it. so funny. Yeah, it is. I loved that. I was like, okay, James, growth. I yeah, see it. I did like that. And then Lala confronts Katie kind of like i guess katie and Allie kind of bring up the fact that they were talking about what happened at paintball which was that lala was talking about how unhappy katie is and she's taking it out on everybody else Allie told katie that lala said katie was miserable and then lala gets all mad about i could have swore to god she used the word miserable I thought so at some point i thought she said miserable in that conversation at paintball and if it wasn't then i know she said it in some other episode like she's used that word to describe katie before 100 percent. i i thought the exact same thing because the bravo editors show that she didn't say mm -hmm. that they didn't show the whole conversation no, no i didn't. feel like she said it i think she did too mm -hmm. i thought she i know she said miserable at some point mm -hmm. it's been like repeated yeah throughout the season but she is insisting that she didn't say that she's telling katie that she feels like they're not as close and she wants to be bffs with them with her and they both cry and i don't care i don't care either and then sheena goes over to sandoval because sandoval's having some lunch or something with schwartz i think yeah she goes over to tom and tom and says hi and then she mentions that she has a new song coming out called apples <laughs> it's called apples <laughs> and she tells them both but truly she's telling tom that it has to do with the scandoval and there mm -hmm. is a line in the song that has to do with him directly something about a ferrari to a jetta yeah or something and he gets very upset and, and leaves storms off and as he's walking out of tom tom he's like thanks for profiting off my misery or like stop profiting stop profiting, profiting yeah. off my misery and Thus ends the episode. And so I want to have a, a multifaceted conversation here because okay. on his face, I love that for him. Yeah. I love people blasting him. I think he's an asshole. Right. I think he deserves it. But to have like a deeper layered conversation about how Sheena is and what a clout goblin she is and constantly needing to monetize herself, but also something that's happening in somebody else's life mm -hmm. that is clearly causing them distress and is not over. Ariana's still in it. Tom's still in it. 
Raquel's still in it. It's not your relationship and you're still fucking making money. Um, Two things are true at the same time. Mm -hmm. I love that for him. Yeah. And he deserves it. Yeah. But Sheena, you also suck. Yeah. 100%. And it's all just for her seeking attention. Like, you and go money. over there and money. And it's just like, you go over there to tell him this, knowing it's going to upset him. Hmm. After just two three episodes ago you're like talking about how you want to mend things with him because you love him your friendship meant a lot to you and you thought he was such a good person and then you're gonna write a song mm -hmm. kind of like digging at him also you didn't have to say it to him you right. could have just released the song and whatever he probably wouldn't have listened to it right nobody's gonna listen well to she music. wants everybody to know that she has a new song exactly and that she's dropping this new track and so she's trying to get interest and attention on it yeah i just feel like it puts her in a bad light, although uh -huh. I kind of love it. I'm just like, oh, my God, Sheena, don't you have your own life? What's going on in your own life, in your own relationship with that tool, Brock? Like, what do you have to contribute and to offer other than how somebody's situation is affecting you? Is that exactly. all you're talking about this entire season without a storyline of your own? Yeah. I'm bored. I know. It's been a Sheena heavy season. I'm like, I don't care about with this With nothing woman. to offer other nothing. than how jealous she is about dancing with the stars and like coming over and being passive aggressive, cleaning Ariana's house. I mean, like this is boring. I know. And she just comes off as a big old bitch. I'm just kind of over it. Yeah. Like, nobody cares about your dumb song, which I listen to, and it's bad. Yeah. Every song she does is it's bad. It's really bad. She can't sing. No. And she's doing pop. I know. And she's almost 40. I'm like, I I, that can be done. You can do pop at 40, yeah. but, like, be you good, don't want to start pop at 40. I know. I just... I know. She, well, in a few episodes ago, she was calling herself emo. Like, she wanted to get into screamo music. Right. I'm like, shut up. Just be a mom. Seriously. Be on VPR. Have things to talk about and contribute that don't involve and or revolve around somebody else's life and pain. I know. She belongs more on the valley. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Probably. With all the other parents mm -hmm. and all the other mom. But she wants to be on VPR with all the young kids because she's cool. Right. And I sing and I'm a pop star. No. You're yeah. cringe. I mean cringe there's a reason we call this reality TV. <laughs> like she's so cringe yeah. i just like she, she does not have the ability to see how bad all of it is and i i'm saying that both lala and sheena thought that they were going to do something this season totally they thought they were going to end up on the right side of thing and that side of things and that ariana was going to come out looking really bad but it's them <laughs> that are being dragged online lala and sheena and i'm just like oh, what are you doing oh how the turntables that's right what yeah. are you doing girls Cringe. i don't get it yeah and then we have the preview for the next few episodes schwartz and sandoval get tattoos together which is weird mm -hmm. um Jax shows up and has yeah. lunch with lisa vanderpump that's gonna be so interesting uh, because the last time Jax was on the show he got into a fight with lisa vanderpump and referred to vanderpump rules as his show <gasps> and she said this is my show oh this is not your show yeah he definitely has a big ego and got too big for his britches oh. and that most likely contributed to him being ultimately fired o-m-g yeah well i can't wait to see that and then sheena and brock are having problems yeah like marital problems but i don't think they're gonna get divorced Probably not, but I mean, I don't think they're going to stay married for long. I hope personally. not. I don't think that this is, uh, if VPR ends, I think Brock is gone. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I think this sure. is the only reason that he's hanging out with Sheena right so now. He's so lame. Yeah. He's so boring. He's, he's not good. He's bad. Even he's on bad the television. after show, I'm like, you don't have anything to contribute. No, you don't. And I think James cut him off. He was saying <sighs> something. Did yeah, you notice that? I did. I think he was trying to opine about children and how it changes. And James just cut him off <laughs> mid-sentence and started talking. And Brock just backed off. I know. What are you going to do? Some macho man you Nobody are. wants you there. Nope. Mr. High Heels. <laughs> I know. Okay. Calm down over I there. Can't. Well, any final thoughts about Vanderpump Rules this week? Well, I wanted to start picking up. I want to see Jax and Lisa Vanderpump fight. Okay. I think that's coming up next week. <laughs> yeah. I want to see more of the Ariana and Tom house. Yeah. Shit. That's very interesting That's to me. That's very interesting. The financials. We always love to know about the coins. But yeah, so far, I mean, you know, pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm hoping it picks up as well. Now, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, you better.
Whoa. Be going to your favorite podcast platform. It's aggressive. And leaving us a glowing five star review. Five. And also, five. if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. And thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we will be back next week to talk Seeking Sister Wife, which is popping off. And we are having so oh, much no. fun with that. So if you're not joining us because you're just a Bravo person, you might want to dip your toe in the TLC. Yeah. Until then, though, please don't forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>